and industrial goods where all those indicators indices were positive. Insurance led the market a surprising 4.48%. And we spoke about insurance two days ago, didn't we? Uh, banking was led south by GT Bank, 3.06% for that index. In total, we did just about 5,000 uh, transactions. Oil and gas remain very sluggish. 2.35% negative, again, for the second trading day in the current week. And not to be outdone, look at the NESD OTC market for unlisted securities. That's about 2.49% on the index reading. That's still seriously uh, keeping that in the green since we started the market week on Tuesday. Let's move on to uh, the fixed income. Thank you, folks. That's the uh, summary of yesterday's NESD OTC unlisted securities market transactions. Let's move on to the fixed income where uh, we're going to have more discussions. Uh, look at the uh, FGN bonds. Not significantly, not bad. 12.900 billion naira. We were single digits when the market reopened on Tuesday. Wednesday, midweek, final day in May was much better by those transactions that you see there. Those papers maturing the longest. 18th July 2034. 11 transactions. Uh, okay, let's take it away. Let's, uh, I will talk about it. Almost 13 billion naira. Uh, let's step into the treasuries market uh, where activity is always significantly better. And uh, you see 80% of the papers traded yesterday were 2017 uh, treasury bills maturing. And you can see the discount high there 20% for 29 June 2017. Uh, 20, 2nd June 2017, papers maturing. You can see that the number, the line one and line three. In summary, what did we do? 153.87 billion naira. Quite a very interesting transaction day. Squeezing stocks before we cross over to uh, Usman at AIM Securities. Uh, look at the FX market. Naira was uh, largely unchanged, a bit quiet on Wednesday. Yes, that's the day after because you need to provide for those effects. So it was largely unchanged at Interbanks, but my 305.40, 404.32 on the pound, uh, 353 on the euro at Interbanks port, largely unchanged at the, on the street uh, market because uh, both the banks and the BDCs will have to make narrow cover for their transactions with the financial regulator, the central bank. So at the importers, exporters window, the market was positive. Narrow gain, 0 0.16 on the US dollar. That's the story connects that to the stock market's red hot performance great isn't it let's move on so let's have some fixed income conversation now with usman ulubajo who is an investment analyst with aim securities good morning and thanks for coming through on the program via skype we appreciate it good morning good morning Bosen. thanks for having me yeah, we, we appreciate your, your time this morning. Uh, and welcome to the new month. Take us through the headlines at the fixed income market in the month we just finished. Well, fixed income markets, uh, the yields on fixed income markets actually trended higher um, in the month of May. And that largely just reflected um, active impact of CBN's monetary tightening uh, on the market. So we all know that um, because of currency pressure, CBN has uh, actually raised is homo, net homo issuances for the period. That together with the liquidity sapping effect of um, FX sales has actually ensured that system liquidity remain very tight. Importantly, what you notice is uh, the interbank overnight trades uh, remained in double digits. It was above 30% on average for the month of May. And that, that largely just left and kept um, yields uh, higher. Both the, um, both the Treasury bill as well as uh, bond yields have actually ticked higher. Uh, I think imp importantly also is the fact that uh, particularly at the bond end, I mean at the uh, long end of the curve, uh, the federal government actually had to cut back on their planned borrowings. So they did that in April, they did that in May, and that largely reflected um, reduced subscription as well as uh, higher, higher, higher bid rates by investors. And uh, so we've seen uh, a tick of an uptick in marginal clearing rates at both the April as well as uh, the main bot and the, as well as the main bond auction. Uh, yesterday um, there was meant, there was meant to be a treasury bill auction. Um, the the result is now out there reflecting reflecting system issues. But we think at least over the rest of over the rest of 
going forward, we think um, at least over the near term, the next few days, we think uh, the outcome of the Treasury bill auction is likely going to determine our real trajectory. Okay. I think another important thing to note is the fact that um, whilst portfolio investors are starting to come into the into the Nigeria market, uh, we've seen little appetite for fixed income instruments, and that has actually uh, we've seen that not because ordinarily if they are. Um, if you've seen increased flows into the market, we'll see yields actually start to trend lower. But it appears that the equity market is uh, is it's, it's what they are intra- um, interested in now. We've seen that positive effect on uh, the equity market returns for the month of May. Uh, Usman, where, where do you see uh, news on the streets as part of the trading uh, theme or sentiments for the month we just finished, uh, talking about the first quarter GDP, uh, do nothing, uh, keeping interest rates unchanged, a more focus on the FX market for uh, the central bank, and of course the fiscal spending, the uh, stepping out of 2016 into 2017 budget. Uh, put this together, do they make any impact, do they make any meaning to whatever trading actions were taken by investors and, and dealers in, month, in the month of May? Yes, I think the I think all these things are actually combined together to actually drive investor sentiment. So we, we've seen a lot of positives, uh, depending on which one you decide to decide to take. Uh, the introduction of the IEW, that is the investors and exporters window, has actually been very crucial. The, the GDP numbers has also has also is also positive. At least it suggests a recovery pattern. Um, what we are expecting, at least from Q2, is the, the main drag on on GDP has been has been the oil uh, has been the oil uh, output. From Q2, uh, it's expected that we'll see uh, a, a rebound in oil, in oil outputs. So oil, oil, oil GDP is expected to recover. Oil oil is expected to sustain uh, its, its, its growth pattern. And that just uh, both in, improves investors' confidence uh, towards Naira, Naira assets. Then on the fundamental front also, we've also seen the fact that uh, the, stocks are, the stocks are actually cheap. Even fixed income instruments are uh, interest rates. Like I said, Naira, Naira, um, the Naira Youth Corp has risen to its highest, its highest on record. Uh, average treasury bills is now around 21%. That's, that's, that's a killing for, as in, that's, that's the high interest yeah, yeah, for anybody who is interested, well, interested I in that instrument. I agree. It's a, it's a kill. At least uh, we're 20% on T-bills, I can still do close to 3%, technically, out of late current inflation level. There about, isn't it? So, thank you very much uh, for uh, coming through to us this, uh, this day. Usman Ulubajo of AIM Securities and Investment Analysts. We appreciate your time. And coming up, we'll be looking at the energy costs impact on local prices of commodity prices with Amaka Ajebu from Financial Derivatives Company. We'll be back in two.